Howdy. Welcome back to Radiography Simplified. I am Michael. We've gone quite the distance on this radiation biology course. We hope it's been worth your time so far. Remember to leave your feedback and questions in the comment section. In this video, we will talk about the distribution of dose. In the last few videos, we discussed the different types of radiation. We mentioned that some types of radiation are more effective at losing or distributing their energy. There are certain terms that help to quantify how efficiently a source of radiation distributes its energy. We'll discuss these terms in this section. Three key terms that are associated with the distribution of dose include linear energy transfer, relative biological effectiveness, and oxygen enhancement ratio. First, we talk about the linear energy transfer. Simply put, it is the amount of energy transmitted in a medium such as soft tissue per unit length traveled in said medium. It is measured in kilo electron volts per micrometer. There are two types of linear energy transfer, high LET and low LET. High LET radiation includes radiation sources that possess a high mass and charge. We already explained in the past that alpha particles deposit a high amount of their energy in a short distance due to their high charge. Thus, Alpha particles are typical examples of high LET radiation. Although neutrons do not have a charge, they also present high LET due to their great mass and colliding ability. High LET radiation is likely to interact directly with biologic tissue. On the other hand, beta particles, X-rays, and gamma rays have little or no mass and act by transferring their energy to electrons to liberate them. These are said to have a low LET and because they do not have enough energy to directly interact with critical targets, they are most likely to participate in the indirect actions of radiation described in the previous video. Let's tell a little story. Different countries of the world use different currencies, and these currencies are exchanged at different values. On the day I created this video, one United States dollar was equal to a little over 770 Nigerian naira. Now let's imagine. We want to go shopping, and we have 1,000 Nigerian Naira. This will definitely get us some stuff. But imagine we had 1,000 US dollars instead. With a single US dollar worth 770 Naira, $1,000 leaves us with 770,000 Naira. Now, that's going to get us a lot more stuff than the 1,000 Naira. It's safe to say that shopping is more effective with the US dollar than with the Naira. With this illustration in mind, let's talk about relative biological effectiveness. We already stated that different sources of radiation, such as alpha particles and neutrons, have different LETs, and this essentially means that they will distribute different amounts of energy per unit length of soft tissue traveled. With high LET sources distributing higher energy over a given distance than low LET sources. With this in mind, it is safe to assume that identical doses of different types of radiation will not yield the same biologic effect. Sort of like how our thousand naira won't get us the same stuff as our thousand dollars. We'll talk about radiation units in a future series on radiation protection. Gray is a unit of absorbed dose. The biological effect we would get from, say, five gray of a high LET source, like alpha particles, is much greater than the biologic effect we would get from five gray of a low LET source, like X-rays. With all this in mind, we can simply define the relative biologic effectiveness, or RBE, as the ratio of the dose of a reference radiation type required to produce a certain biologic effect to the dose of the radiation being tested to produce the same biologic effect. A reference dose commonly used is 250 kilovoltage X-rays. Let's make it clearer with a little example. If it is discovered through scientific experiments that 500 milligray of 250 kilovoltage X-rays is needed to produce the same amount of cell death as 75 milligray of 10 mega electron voltage neutrons. Going by the RBE formula, the RBE of 10 mega electron voltage neutrons when tested against our reference radiation, 250 kilovoltage X-rays is 6.67. Based on this illustration, we can say that that 10 mega electron voltage neutrons are 6.67 times more powerful than our reference radiation. Now, how does RBE relate to LET? High linear energy transfer sources generally have a high relative biologic effectiveness when compared to low energy transfer sources. 
Another way to put this is by saying that as LET increases, RBE also increases. However, this is only true up to a certain energy level. At LRT above 100 kilo electron volts per micrometer, a higher LRT will not lead to greater relative biologic effect. This is because at this point, the radiation is already producing maximum damage and increasing the LET couldn't possibly make it worse than it already is. The next term we'll discuss is the oxygen enhancement ratio, or OER. The body tissues are more sensitive to radiation when they are oxygenated than when they lack oxygen. This is known as the oxygen effect. The OER is simply the ratio of the dose of a given radiation needed to cause a given biologic effect in deoxygenated conditions to the dose of the same radiation needed to cause the same biologic effect under oxygenated conditions. We'll conclude this section by talking about how OER relates to LET. For low LET radiation sources, the OER is between 2 to 3. This implies that the radiation is two to three times more powerful in producing biologic effects when the cells are oxygenated as compared to when the cells are deoxygenated. On the other hand, because high LET radiation interacts directly with tissues and not through radical formation, high LET is not as dependent on oxygen as low LET. Thus, the OER for high LET can be as low as one. This means that the radiation will produce the same biologic effects when the cells are oxygenated as compared to when the cells are deoxygenated. We hope you enjoyed this section. We understand it can be a bit technical. Feel free to review this video one more time to understand it better. In the next video, we circle back to high school biology and discuss the cell cycle and how it relates to radiation biology. See you next time.